Hello, I just wanted to pop on here and talk about a couple things. First, today is the day that I'm supposed to kind of like start progressing from 50% of my body weight on my operated leg to like 60 to 65 to 75 and, that, and so on. I think they say increase 10 to 15% daily if you feel good. It's so hard to judge like 15, 5, 10, even like 50%. Like I'm having such a hard time deciding if I'm putting too much weight, not enough weight on my leg. So that's supposed to be today, but I haven't been doing a very good job of putting 50% on my leg for the last week, I don't think. So I'm gonna draw out the 50% a couple more days. Also, I'm having extreme pain in my hip. We'll get to that. So I think I'm gonna draw it out like two more days and then I'll try to jump to like 65% and then 75, and then 90, and then play with 100. And then once you get to 100, they recommend you still kind of bring around one crutch throughout the day in case you get tired. That being said, my hip is hurting a lot in certain situations. I'm kind of trying to figure out what it is without hurting it, if that makes sense, because hurting it is never good, but Sometimes when I get on my chair and I lead with my right leg and then I kind of like lean into my right side, you know, as you bring in your other leg, I don't know how to explain it, I'll try to show you, but that will really hurt it, like make me, you know, like lose my breath, you know, like jump. And then just sometimes when I put too much weight on it, it kind of feels weird. And then a couple times yesterday, I was bending down to the ground to get something off the ground and I was had. I had literally almost like 80-90% of my weight on my left leg, so that non-operated leg, and still bending down all the way to the ground would really hurt my hip. So it's kind of hard to explain the hurt. There's a couple of different things. There's definitely one where it feels tight. There's another one where it feels like it's catching when I walk and I put a lot of weight on it. And then the third one is when it's just like deep kind of like don't do that like you're you're moving your leg in a place that shouldn't be there I don't know what exactly is happening in there but something is not happy it's usually when my leg is like flexed up and then I try to like shift weight if that makes sense I would say that I really started trying to put more and more weight like monitoring the amount of weight I was putting on my leg two or three days ago, and then in those two or three days, the pain has substantially gone up. And kind of like stiffness and that type of thing. So, yeah. I'm about to go to rehab right now, and I really hope that we do something. Like, I don't even know if I'm gonna say that it hurts that bad because I haven't done anything with this new PT, like at all. Like, we have not done anything. So, I'm hoping that we can like at least d do something if that makes sense, like anything progressive. Like I just want to do something new and add something. I'm getting a little bit impatient. Not impatient, but just like frustrated that I haven't learned anything new since day one pretty much. So I'll keep you posted on how I incrementally add weight to my leg, but I'm just trying to be kind of lenient with it. And then when I'm standing up straight with no crutches, like at the sink or something, I'm trying to just kind of like shift weight and like put 50% on my right because it's so easy to just lean into that left leg like I have been for the last two weeks, just like lean into it, lean into it. So I'm trying to like distribute it evenly and it's so much harder than I thought it would be. Like my brain just goes like, put everything to the left, put everything to the left. All right, I gotta get going and hopefully I can report that I have some new exercises or some new things that I've done. Oh, oh my gosh, there's another thing we need to talk about. So what day is today? This, it, it's, I don't have to wear a brace today. Today's the first day that I don't have to wear a brace when I walk around because it's 17 days. I'm gonna double check that because maybe I'm crazy. So 17 days, I get to take off the brace because I get to do more extension. And then at 
21 days is when, so in a couple days, I get to do external rotation, which I believe is what's hurting me so bad. I think that I'm sometimes being like lackadaisical with it and it's kind of rotating out and then I'm putting weight on it and that's really causing an issue. Let me just make sure. Yeah. 17 days. For 17 days I had to wear my brace while I walked and now I do not. But I probably will wear it to PT. Uh, like on the way there and then I won't wear it into PT because when I drive it helps me move my leg if I need to. I pick up the the brace and I just want to have it there for safety because it might be a little bit trafficy on my way home. All right, good boy. Good. Chronicles of my life. Constant. This is a constant. It's okay because we are three weeks out. So like a lot of my restrictions are done today. I think the last one is the external rotation. Technically that is lifted today. I have been advised not to do it kind of on my own. So I'm waiting until PT tomorrow to like do it, to like externally rotate my leg. But anyways, oh gosh, what a relief. So. This means that I don't have to sleep with like the little booties on or a band. I do sleep in the CPM machine, so that doesn't really matter to me. I have one more week of CPM machine and I'm currently working on weeding off my crutches. It's not going great, to be honest. I can't figure out how much weight to put on. It's just tough. Uh, I'm just using one crutch most of the day to kind of help me apply more pressure. And yeah, I just wanted to pop in and say that it's three weeks, 21 days, baby. And I need to go shower and get ready for the day and I'm exhausted. But taking it day by day and we are making it, baby. Three weeks kind of flew by. It seems long in the moment, but then when you get there, you're like, dang, three weeks, okay, we can do this. We got this. Biggest advice, take it day by day. Second by second, moment by moment. All right, I'll, I'll check in with you guys in a little. I'm gonna take some pills and, you know, do my thing. Do my little dance dance. I can't wait till these don't be like this anymore. <laughs> You're just, you're gonna pull. Yeah. I need you to pull towards you. Where did I have it? Let me have it for a second. It's like so. Hold those for a second. Probably so much harder because my skin's so inflamed around there because I'm itching the crap out of there. You alright? Mm hmm. So, a thing happened today.
I walked without my crutches for the first time. I'm currently without crutch. It's Friday, the... I don't even actually know the date of today. A uh, day after three weeks, or kind of technically three weeks. And my crutch was taken away from me. <laughs> so I kind of had transitioned to just like one crutch the last two days and then today at PT uh hold on let me close this door look at me I just went up a step without crutches today at PT my uh, physical therapist just like took away my crutch and asked me to take a couple steps so I did and then uh I don't have any footage of that because I literally only took two steps, but then what you just saw is me walking for the first time like right after that when I went to the gym. So yeah, <laughs> it's exciting. Uh, it feels crazy. Like my leg doesn't feel like it belongs to me. It's just like wild. Uh, I've had, I was telling my sister this, but like I've had a lot of surgeries and this is, the, the one that made me feel most like foreign to my leg. Like I would never be able to walk again normal. And so then when he took away the crutch, like my first step was literally so insane. Like it felt like I had never walked before in my life. So uh, today and tomorrow I'm supposed to be spending about 10 to 20% of my walking day without a crutch. And then the other 80 to 90% can be spent with one crutch and then by Sunday I'm gonna attempt to spend like 30 to 40 percent of the day with no crutch so I've already spent a good amount of the day today with no crutch so I'll probably have a crutch for the rest of the day but when I have the crutch I'm like trying really hard not to like lean into it too much I'm sometimes even using it as like a cane because I kind of feel like the hardest part of walking for me right now is like the idea of like being able to balance so the cane helps like balance like I don't necessarily have to put weight on it but it just kind of helps like balance me so yeah here are some more clips of me walking over the next couple of days and my progression So today's been really interesting, like even before I started walking without the crutch and then like after and like just, just really interesting, uh, I just felt a lot more comfortable like when I'm moving, getting like down and up from the ground for like rehab and stuff and just like moving around in general like in the bed and all that kind of stuff has just felt like a lot more like free like i today is the last day that i'm supposed to be restricting external rotation and it's funny because it just like feels right i don't know if it's because i have in my head that it should feel right but somehow it just like feels like my leg wants to move that way and prior to today it hasn't felt like that like even when i'm laying down i don't like externally rotate by accident or anything like my leg like doesn't allow me but now like I want to <laughs> um, and yeah just like little things like using my hip flexor a little bit more feels natural and and less painful so day 21 I think is today or 22 and it's just like a huge 
a huge changing day. So if you can see, like when I walk, I've got like a pretty intense limp. So the kind of protocol to be completely off crutches and be like essentially cleared to not have crutches anymore is walking without a limp. So I've got to work on that, but obviously it's day one of walking. So hopefully in those clips, I got to the point where I could walk without a limp. But I'm filming this before those clips are taken, so we shall see, we shall see. You'll know before me, probably. Hello, guys. It's December 14th, so in a couple days it'll be a month. And I just wanted to do a little update and let you guys know that I am having a bad day. So if my progress was positive the last couple weeks, today is the first big day where it kind of feels like I took a couple steps back. And that's okay. I just wanted to check in and let you guys know that, document it. My hip is just really painful today in general, but it's like locking up and feels like it needs to pop, but I can't like go into a squat to pop it. Today is like the fourth or fifth day that I've been walking without a crutch and I can hardly walk. It feels like the first day, so that's not great, but it's, I mean, it's realistic. No recovery from any injury is linear, so it's just a little dip of a day. I'll check in tomorrow and let you guys know how it goes and if it's like another bad day or if it just kind of like plateaus or if it goes back to getting better. Hopefully it goes back to getting better because not being able to walk today was like really crappy. Hello, my loves. I just wanted to make a quick little update on some thoughts I was having and I just don't have a lot of time these days so I figured I could do it while I'm driving. I'm on my way home from rehab. Sorry, it's so bouncy. Tomorrow is four months and also what I mean by that is four weeks and things are okay. My hip keeps like locking. I think I made an update about this yesterday but I don't know, my days are so long lately. Uh, so it keeps like locking up and feeling like I need to like pop it. And I obviously can't, so that's not like really great. The guy, uh, my physical therapist said just like, you're just gonna have to deal with it and try to like musculaturely work around it. So just like stretch things and work on engaging things and that kind of thing. It hurts when I walk, so that's just like not really ideal. It's making me limp a little bit more, but I'm still able to walk. Uh, I'm pretty sure today is the last day I'm gonna even, actually yesterday is the last day I'm gonna even think about using a crutch. I'm pretty much done with the crutch for now. I'm, I'm pretty sick of it. So we're done with the crutch. Uh, I'll bring it when I go like outside or to the store or on long walks and stuff. But other than that, I'm done with it. Uh, the main thing that I wanted to talk about today, I think is, I don't know, just like some feelings I was having. I was editing this morning and it's so weird to look back on the first two weeks because I'm still editing the first two weeks because my life is just busy and I don't have time to edit. But it's so weird to think about the first two weeks because I literally like couldn't even imagine being where I am now four weeks out. I just like editing that it just like brought me back in my feels and I realized like in those first two weeks I never I like couldn't imagine ever being able to walk again. Couldn't imagine being able to put my own socks on. Couldn't imagine being able to shower without some assistance like all of the things I just was like, oh, I'll never be able to do that again, or at least it will be a long time. And uh, my lips are so dry. Uh, like two short weeks later, I'm like, go. I go up and down stairs without crutches. I can put on all my clothes by myself. I can drive totally normally. Um, there's like not really a whole lot of things that I can't do other than like athletics. So yeah, just wanted to come on and say that because it's really so strange how fast it went. And my motto was 
to just take it like day by day, almost like minute by minute, because when you look to the future too much, it's it seems so impossible and so far away. Like I mentioned, even taking it day by day when I would like momentarily think about something in the future, I was like, that's never going to happen in that amount of time. Like it's going to be months before I can do anything. And yeah, I mean, I tried to take the trash out, uh, I think like within those first two weeks and I like couldn't do it. And then yesterday I just did it. So little things like that and just having full freedom back and yeah. So one month tomorrow and it went by slow in the moment and now looking back it feels fast. So there's hope for everyone out there that's dealing with any recovery. Um, it will feel slow day by day but I think the key to like kind of like staying sane through it is like not thinking ahead. You just have to be in every moment and just think I have to just do my rehab right now. I have to just work on this. I have to work on that. One of my things is like, I have a hard time thinking that something so basic is meaningful. For instance, like circumduction. It's mundane. It's repetitive. It's boring. It doesn't feel like you're doing anything. But when you do it every day, three times a day for a month, you're in a way different position than you would be if you didn't do it. So that's all I have to say is consistency is key. And on that note, I'm going to go hopefully finish my video and you guys can see it. I hope soon. It's so late. I'm sorry. I'm literally a month out and I'm still haven't posted my one and two week update. So it's going to be an hour long as well, by the way. So hopefully you guys are ready. Grab some popcorn or whatnot and, and watch it. Okay. If you haven't already, go watch it. It's up. All right, so I'm just gonna walk you guys through some of these exercises that I was able to do during the third and fourth week of my recovery. I wasn't able to start this until the fourth week, but I'm basically just foam rolling my TFL. It's a muscle kind of on the outside of your hip that really tends to get tight and sore and overactive during this recovery, especially because I had the adductor release. So everything is kind of like always being used through the outside of your hip rather than the inside. And with all of the glute work that I was doing in the first couple weeks, that TFL just has a tendency to turn on and then get really tight. And so this foam rolling has helped my gait more than anything. It really helps me walk and be able to fully extend that leg backwards and engage my glute when I walk. I'm going to leave in the transitions here to just show you kind of like how I move around on the ground and you can take some tips from it. Here I'm getting into the clamshell, which is as of right now, the hardest exercise that I do. You can see that I don't have very good range of motion here. And if I keep my heels together like I'm supposed to, I can really hardly lift my leg up. I did find something that helped this, and that was doing this exercise against a wall and pushing my heels into the wall while I lift it up. It helps me turn off that TFL and anything in the front of the hip and engage back into my glutes. Also, what helps is to pull my knees back in line with my hips so that I'm essentially a straight line and then my heels are back behind me. Here I'm moving into looks like a quad stretch. So just stretching that quad in a prone position, which is the first time I was able to do that. Uh, you can't lay on your stomach for the first couple weeks. So this feels really nice and it just gets like a good stretch to that front of the hip. I hold these for anywhere from like 15 to 30 seconds each and I usually just cycle them in with my sets. Here I'm just activating my glutes. You won't be able to see much happening but pretty much I'm engaging my core and then I'm engaging my glutes and then I'm straightening my legs and almost flexing my quads. It's really hard to fully flex your quads on the bad side but just making sure that those glutes are getting a really good activation and keeping your core tight throughout the entire process. Okay, so this next exercise 
is one that I technically was not supposed to be doing, but because I was having so many issues with the clamshell, we wanted to get something to activate my glutes a little bit more. So they allowed me to do a glute bridge, double leg, uh, but very low extension here. So you can see I'm resetting in between each rep. So I'm relaxing my core and then I'm engaging my core and then I'm engaging my glutes and then I'm pressing up and I'm not pressing up to full extension. So if I was doing this regularly, I would be pressing further up and pressing my hips higher to the sky. But here I'm stopping short, still getting a good contraction of my glutes, uh, keeping my core tight and my, my uh, pelvis kind of tucked the whole time. That way I get a contraction earlier than I would if, I, if my back was an extension throughout this movement. This is something that um, most people probably can't do until six weeks, but like I said, it was just an exception because I was having a lot of troubles with other glute stuff and uh, this is kind of a crucial point in the recovery to make sure your glutes are getting adequate work and activating on a regular basis. Again, you can see kind of how I choose to move. This is a little bit of a risky get up. <laughs> you can see I'm uncomfortable there. Next, we're gonna go into tall kneeling. So I just put this under my knees for comfort. You can do it on a bed or on the carpet if it's fine for your knees, but I just sit back into my calves, my heels, and then I kneel up tall squeezing my glutes, uh, but not overextending. You can see that I don't go into like overextension through my hips there. I am hardly hitting neutral, but I'm still able to get a good contraction of my glutes because that's what I'm focusing on. You can also add a ball or a weight in your hands to make this exercise harder. It would target a lot more shoulders and also just add weight overall to the movement. Or you can use some type of resistance on the way down. And that would target a little bit more core and stability throughout the movement. So you could use a resistance band or a cable and just pull down on it and add some weight on your way down. So for purposes of this video, I'm using this foam roller as my stabilizer, but normally I would just put my hands against a wall and then just do some calf raises, trying to keep kind of both of my quads reasonably activated and not overextend through the hips, but keeping the glutes a little bit engaged. Uh, usually, I usually like to go faster on the way up and nice and slow on the way down. Eventually we'll get to single leg calf raises here or weighted calf raises, but we aren't there quite yet. All right, and here we are doing weight shifting. So I'm essentially just putting all of my weight on my right leg and then all my weight on my left leg and just shifting weight back and forth. It's kind of hard to tell from this angle, but I've got my knee quite bent here, using a lot of my knee and ankle more as the stabilizers rather than my hip. If I kept my knee more straight, then it would kind of transfer that stabilizing need to my hip and my glutes are just not where they need to be to take on that responsibility right now. So yeah, you can see I'm really putting a lot of weight on each leg and it feels good, no pain. So here we've got bent over prone hip extension. So I'm trying to keep my leg as straight as possible, but at this point I started to have a little bit of tightness and pain in the front of my hip. So I'm bending it a little bit just cause that helps alleviate some of that pain through that TFL and hip flexor. So here I'm basically just doing the same thing. I engage my core first, then I engage my glute and then I let that bring my leg up and squeeze at the top for a second. You can see I put my hand on my glute a lot. It's, it's to better have a muscle mind connection of what muscle is working. Because there's so many different muscles around your leg and your hip and all that kind of stuff that you can have a tendency to use the wrong muscle. And right in this specific situation, we are really focusing on like the glute me and the glute max. So I am putting my hand on those muscles to make sure that they are the, doing the work rather than maybe my low back or my hamstring or something. Okay, so you can see me adjusting this box to, to kind of have a makeshift platform for me to sit on. I wouldn't recommend trying this at home. It felt dangerous. But this is another exercise that I've been told I can do, but isn't necessarily on my PT protocol at the moment, but it's just to better get my quad activating or rather challenge my quad a little bit more. Most of the isometric quad holds and stuff like that 
are a little bit easy for me at the moment, so I'm just kind of increasing the level of difficulty here for myself. So I'm going decently fast up, and then on the eccentric part of the movement, very slow, and you can see my quad just twitching. It feels like there's stem on my leg literally right now, but it feels good and it it like kind of gets me sore, but not like too sore. Nothing else has been getting me sore to this point, so this is a good thing to implement. And then hopefully eventually I'll be able to add some weight to that. All right, you guys, it's all happy for this portion of PT. I will have full PT videos coming out of weeks one and two and then weeks three and four and weeks five and six and so on and so forth but they aren't up yet unfortunately so yeah these are just the exercises i added into my daily pt weeks three and four meaning there are a lot more but those were added weeks one and two so please feel free to reach out if you have any questions and i'd be happy to answer them as always happy healing and i'll see you in the next one